celebrate your mercies towards us because they are new each morning. Great is your faithfulness. We celebrate you, our Father. We celebrate you, our God. We celebrate you. The one who is our shield. The one who is his, uh, who his banner over us is victory. The one who is our shepherd, the good the Lord. And we bless you this morning for making it possible for us to be here to be gathered in this sanctuary, to fellowship with you, and uh, even with the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So welcome viewers all around the globe, across the nations, to Liberty House International Church, Incorporated, all the way from the USA. We are coming to you live uh, via... YouTube and uh, Facebook Amen. and uh, if you miss any portion of this uh, broadcast please go to our website libertyhouseusa.org once again libertyhouse.org or our YouTube channel and you can treat yourself to all the videos that we have there and uh, yours sincerely I am a servant a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. an agent of change and transformation with a message of transformation for you. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to share. A lot of folks are in bondage. A lot of folks are frustrated. A lot of folks are in fear. That tells me our job is not over yet. We have to share truth. Walk in truth. Model truth. So people can come out of bondage. Hallelujah. We can stop the circulation of junk. If we are going to model truth. And share truth. We are blessed to be. Come on, church. We are blessed to be what? A blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I'm coming to you with one of uh, STD kind of messages. STD. We are not talking about sexually transmitted diseases. We are talking about a sensitive, touchy, and a delicate. Hallelujah. I like to come like that. <laughs> so just a disclaimer, a warning. So please don't tune me out yet. Listen to me carefully and it's going to help you. I think uh, last week we started sharing, um, talking about, um, we talked about, it, uh, no, I, I clicked on the wrong thing. Let me go to Sunday. Okay, I click on Friday. So last Sunday we tackled the subject of worry. And we titled it, Worry Impedes Progress. What I'm doing is, I'm talking about indicators of lack of faith. Or I'm pointing to signals, signs of lack of confidence in Christ. Because at times we think we are walking in faith or we are believing God and we are not believing God. We are on another street altogether. And I want to help people come out of their frustrations. Because they think they are doing something that is reaching the Bible, something that they've heard in church service, and yet it's not working. And I'm here to give you answers. Because some people are practicing things they have no business to practice. Alright, so one of the things, or one of the indicators is worry. Another one is fear. Another is doubt. Another is unbelief. So um, I'll be sharing these lessons with you along the line. So last week we started talking about worry. And we learned so much about worry. If I may go back to do a recap, I wonder if I can do a, what do you, a pop quiz. Right. Tell me one of the things that Jesus calls worry. All right. Nobody say anything. So we said worry. Jesus calls worry ignorance of God's, uh, uh, what do you call it? No? 
Ignorance of God's word. What's value? You worry because you don't know your value, you don't know your worth. We found that in uh, Matthew chapter 6. If you have, you know your value, you know your worth, that means you don't have identity crisis. So you have Abba Father in place in your life. You are grounded. You are solid. And uh, you have understanding of who your father is. In the natural, people who have understanding of who their father is and they are loaded, they are wealthy, they are rich, they know that their father takes good care of them. So the same thing applies spiritually. If you know who your father is, you don't have an anti crisis and therefore you know your value. So ignorance of value, you know, uh, leads to worry. Then another, he called it lack of faith in the father. Then uh, another, care for the wrong thing or negativity or negativity in imagination. Care for the wrong thing or negativity in imagination. Um, that is distraction. Distraction. They are distracted instead of being on that something. And then we also learn it negates faith. It chokes faith. When you walk in worry, there's no way your faith is going to work. And then the last but not the least is focus on self. When you worry, you focus on self. You are looking at your ability. Apart from Christ, apart from God, you are not looking at what God can do, what he brings to the table, and what he's done before. You are just looking at me, myself, and I. And in the flesh, there's no good thing. All right, so what is the solution? Just stop it. Stop worrying. Tell, you something, tell the person you don't have to worry. And uh, I have a good opportunity this morning. Tell them, I have a good opportunity this morning. If you are worrying, to tell you, stop worrying. Hallelujah. We are to set affection on things above, according to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Not things that are earthly. We set our mind or set our affection. When you worry, you are setting your mind on things that are earthly. Alright? Okay. So that's a reminder. If you haven't listened to it, if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it. Go back and watch it. Don't waste your time. Don't hurt yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, uh, so, just, what was it? Friday. I was talking about it from another angle, and I titled it, Ignorance Fosters Unbelief. Ignorance Fosters Unbelief. And we saw in the book of First Timothy chapter 1, 13, how Paul said he persecuted the church. In fact, let's read it. So let's go to First Timothy. That would be a good uh, place to start. I'm just trying to recap previous messages, and then I'll link it up to uh, what we have this morning. So First uh, Timothy chapter 1, 13. 1 Timothy 1, 13. Thank you, Jesus. You are going to be blessed. Hallelujah. But you hear things that probably will make your head spin. But um, His grace is sufficient. Your head will not spin. Hallelujah. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, let's take it from 12 and see if it makes sense. Yes. So let's read together. We are reading 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. But now we are in verse 12. Read, church. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. So somebody who was persecuting the church, he was then called Saul. He thought the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ were wrong because he was into Judaism or Judaism. It was into the mosaic kind of law. And the disciples or the followers of Jesus Christ, they said, by the law is over. This this Messiah, this is the new way, and this is the new thing, new approach towards God, new way to have a relationship with God, and that's all we are going for. And I'm going to say something right here. Have you noticed in the New Testament, Jesus is, uh, when, okay, let me say it this way. When Jesus showed up, his ministry impacting people and his resurrection, those who followed him. Have you realized that Jesus, he referred to God not as God, but Father? I'm teaching you something now. Listen carefully. Because some people religiously do things that are not based in the Bible. Because traditionally it's been done that way. Jesus never referred to God as Jehovah, uh, El Shaddai, uh, Jehovah Almighty, Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah, Tikinu, and whatever. He did it. I'm not saying those things are bad. Don't get me wrong. We have to know the various names of God. 
Because through the names of God, somehow we, we come to a place of understanding the good things that come from God. That's we taught our, uh, our children. I'm talking about the children department. We taught them the names of God and the, and, the, and the purpose, the objective is to expose them to who God is. All right? And then we come to the attributes of God. So it shows what God does. All right? Manifestation as it were of God. So because when we talk about God, uh, God, Jehovah, chicken. So the, the Lord are all our righteousness. Some aspect. But that righteousness was pointing to Jesus Christ who will show up. Now he is our righteousness. Do you get it? Yeah. All right. So all these things, the Old Testament, they were pointing, including the prophets, the Lord, they were pointing to Jesus. So Jesus, when he showed up, remember, he was fulfilling the old and at the same time introducing and establishing what? The new. Okay? So he called God Father, Father. Righteous Father, Heavenly Father. And he referred even to him when he was talking to the disciples. He said, I'm going to my Father and your Father. Okay? So I want us to learn from that, from the Master himself. And then let's drop this uh, Yahweh and all. We think he's cute. And at times he shows where you are. It makes God distant. Because in the Old Testament, they were so much afraid of God, they, they, they couldn't even mention their name. So they had to come up with things. But in the New Testament, it's different because we have union with Christ. We become one with Him. It's different. So that's why when you read uh, in Romans chapter 8, it says that now we can cry, Abba, Father. If He wanted us to continue with God, Yahweh, He would have said that. The Bible would have stated that. But it's not so. That's one of the STD kind of uh, things. I've said it. So those who didn't know, it's not sexually transmitted. This is spiritually transmitted. Truth. Transition. Hallelujah. Amen. It will take you some time to adjust to what I'm saying. Alright? Some people, I think, when they are praying or they address God as uh, Jehovah, give me some of the names. Jehovah what? They love it. Jehovah Shammah. They feel, yes. It's like, yes, I'm talking to God. But when they say something that Lord or Heavenly Father, it's like, no, that, that one, I don't feel it. So I have to say, Jehovah, yeah, and what? El Shaddai, and all that. That one you have to know. That helps build you up to a place where your confidence is solid and you can go to Him. And don't, when you are praying, don't try, and try to impress people. I've, I've, I've heard people when they are praying, you want to make a dish. Jehovah this year. What? They are trying to impress. You don't need all that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Alright. So he's thanking God that what he was doing, look at how much the, the, the vim, the passion, the enthusiasm he had persecuting, the vigor that he had persecuting the churches to the point of killing some of them to their death. You get know what I'm saying? Because to, to him, they are coming against what is established. But what if Saul knew that it was established, Jesus came to fulfill it and to do away with that. And to introduce the new. Alright? So he kept doing it. He kept doing it and he got frustrated. So Jesus showed himself to him on uh, his way to Damascus. Because he was still going to no, Acts chapter 9. He was still going to persecute these people who were calling on the name of Jesus. And at that time, the church even were uh, what do you call warned not to teach uh, about Jesus, not to mention the name and all that. They were seen as people who were chaotic, they are introducing something new to society. Why? Because all these um, leaders were into the mosaic or Judaism. That which is what? Being done away with. It has to be by revelation. So, revelation is like I have received a revelation and now you don't have that revelation, but through my teaching, you can also partake and share in the revelation that the Lord has given me. Just like years ago, people didn't believe in divine healing, but God gave the revelation to some people that divine healing still is for today. Because some people say when the last apostle died, then that's when healing stopped. Because that power was only upon and within the immediate apostles of Jesus Christ. Do you get it? But they were wrong because the Bible doesn't say that. 
God is still God. Hebrews 13 years say Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. If the power of God ceases to work, then some portion of God has what failed. And his power continues to work because that is part of what makes him God. It's all in the equation. Do you get it? So he persecuted. Then let's read on. Something interesting happened. Let's read on. God called this person to ministry. So he said, although I was um, formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained what? Mercy. Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. We'll come back to this, but I want us to see the revelation aspect of it. So let's go to Galatians. This is not uh, part of what I'm going to share, but it's setting this up. So let's go to Galatians. We'll come back to this verse. Galatians chapter 1, 12. Okay, so Paul speaking still. Neither received it from, he's talking about the revelation, the gospel. Nor was I taught it. It came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's continue. For you have heard of my word. Come on. Okay, let's read together. Read. Don't let me be like Sister Irene and ask you to cut for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's read. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. Do you get it? He said it. That is his testimony. He was. He was. I nearly used the American slang. Dumb. No. He was he was ignorant. <laughs> oh dear Lord. He was ignorant of truth. You understand what I'm saying? Lack of knowledge. Alright? His dumb days, immature days. Everybody goes through that. That's what I'm uh, referring to. But he was so entrenched in what he was doing, he felt so powerful. He thought he was right. And all these people were wrong. All right? So he said, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. Let's read on. Read together. Read. And I advanced. No, have you had breakfast? Let's read like we're excited at all we are hearing. I'm not touching you yet, please. And I'm going to touch you in love. Let's read. And I advanced in Judaism beyond any of my what? Contemporaries. In my own nation, be more exceedingly what zealous for the traditions of my fathers. That's where some people are washing of hands, and I'll touch on one solid one fasting. Fasting is another okay. Should I do this now? Why should we wait? Traditions of the father, some traditions, one, I'll get it out of the way. People think this way. And it's unbelief, but they don't know. Because unbelief comes in various ways. It's disguised. Unbelief. It shows up at times in worry. We are overly concerned. That's unbelief. You say, oh, I'm just concerned. Disguise. Overly concerned. Worry. You are working in unbelief. But I'll come to that. But let me say this. People say this. You, you have to seek the Lord. You have to wait before the Lord. Traditionally, in the, New Te in the Old Testament, they equate waiting before God and seeking the face of the Lord with fasting. Right now, it's not so. Look, I walk in these things. I know what I'm talking about. When we say we are going to seek the face of the Lord, we are going to wait on the Lord, we are referring to, we used to, uh, uh, I'll say it in God, the way I used to say it back home. When you are talking to your people, you say, I'm going to my job waiting, my job waiting. That means you are going to go into fasting. You are going to wait on the Lord. Or you are going to go on the mountain. You know, seeking the face of the Lord. There's something that probably, um, a, a, a question that you have, solution you are looking for, an answer to something. Then you say you are going to fast. That was then. Now it's different. Why? See, because the way we see God is not necessarily by fasting. I'll say that again. The way we wait on God is not necessarily fasting. The way you wait on God, the way you what? You seek the first of the Lord. Jesus said it in Matthew 6.33. What did he say? What did he say? Seek first. 
Was there fasting in there? No. It's just like Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. The people slap fasting in there. Ask with fasting and it shall be given. Seek with fasting and it shall be found. Knock with fasting and it shall be opened. These are traditions of the church. You are still in the mosaic. Because to seek God, he says, seek first. Jesus himself said in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How do we get into the righteousness of God? By faith, not by fasting. How do we get into the righteousness? How do we come by the righteousness that is of Christ? By faith. It's not by fasting. Is that clear? Do you agree with me on that? You should have said amen. I know some of you are still thinking. Amen. And the same way, some people that are listening to me, they are still thinking. Fasting does not make you holy. That fasting does not make you right before God. The only thing that makes one right before God is one's faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Period. Amen. Amen. That's how simple it is. Amen. Now, you can abstain from food. That is fasting. Refuse to eat. God is not pleased by that. There are people in prison, they go on hunger strike. Does it mean God is moved by their hunger strike? No. And I know some other religious uh, kind of organizations or religions, they fast. Does it mean that moves God? No. Abstinence from food doesn't move God. What moves God is a heart that is established in Him. A heart that is established in His Word. A heart that is hungry and thirsty after Him. A heart that is dependent on Him. That is what God is after. Hallelujah. Amen. So devotion to God. I mean, when you say, okay, I'm going to devote my time, I'm going to devote uh, my strength, energy, whatever, and I'm going to go to God in prayer. You see, you seek the Lord. And then the Bible says, now we are, because we are one with Him, God is not far away. So we read things like um, uh, Jeremiah. Then we say, seek Him while he's, He can be found. Seek Him while He's near. No, that is Old Testament. I've been through some of those things. I've been taught. I was raised up with those things. And some of these I'm sharing with you because they didn't have a revelation. They couldn't also share it. Paul didn't have the revelation of who Jesus Christ was. So he was persecuting him and persecuting those who were following him. So in the same way, I want you to enjoy this ride. I want you to enjoy your relationship with Jesus. It can be wonderful. It can be fulfilling when you come to knowledge. When you come into the revelation of who Jesus is. And the, the way he's made for you to have this what relationship. Amen. Our coming to relationship with him was by faith, not by fasting. It wasn't by prayer. See all the things that I'm mentioning? They are stated in the Bible. They are scriptural. But it can be they can be practiced the wrong way. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't get me wrong. If you choose to fast, I'm not saying don't fast. If you choose to pray, I'm not saying don't pray. So don't get me wrong. I'm talking about what is wrong. What we base our faith in that it's not working for us. Some will say, oh, you know, I was able to start this business. I fasted and the Lord gave me an idea. I'm going to say to you, in love, ignorance led you to fast. God gives you ideas without having to fast. I'm going to say this for those who don't know probably they are hearing this first time i'm a prophetic kind of person i prophesy to people i've ministered to people let me talk first about our service in this our services when we meet here you know that the presence of god is frequent with us Amen. it's not because i fast every sunday or i fast during the week so when we come here we have the presence of god please hear me well don't get upset with me Probably you say you fast every three, uh, what, two, two days in a week. And so that's why I get the presence of it. No! Please, I want to help you out. You are putting your whole family into what a pressure for nothing. You don't talk to them. You go and isolate yourself in the name of fasting. You lock yourself up. Please stop it. It's self effort. You're getting to your own works. The presence of God flows. The power of God flows when you have knowledge. When you have revelation of who the Holy Spirit is, and you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you know the word of God, this is easy. Yeah. Amen. So we see frequently the presence of God. Now let me tell you something also. 
I've been ministering to people. I've seen all kinds of things. I don't, I don't like saying these things because it would be like I'm trying to brag. But for the sake of those who don't know me and say, where is this guy coming from? And you're saying all this and blah, 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 blah. And I, I just want to say some of these things. I, we, we meet people. Like the way you do, we prophesy to people. And we see things come to pass. Is it because we fasted? How does God get the word to you? Does he get the word to you because you fasted? Does he speak to you because the Father speaks to you, the Holy through the Holy Spirit, because you fasted, because you have prayed? No. That is why years ago I started telling you that don't accept, don't believe these things. People say things like, you know, I was in prayer and the Lord spoke to me. Have you realized that most people, before they say the Lord spoke to me, they will say, I was in prayer. I was praying. And then they will say, I was really, really on a what? Consecration. Seven-day consecration. Three-day consecration. Three-day fast. And the Lord spoke this to me. Look, that is bongoms and yamas. You don't have to be on a three-day or seven-day, 21-day, 40-day fast before the Lord speaks. If that happens, then you are down of hearing. That's how insensitive you are towards the Holy Spirit. That's how you are like matter, 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 matter. You are all so much occupied with things that are not necessary. So when God is coming through to you, you don't even get it. So you have to shut everything down. Be, in a, be on a fast before you hear from the Lord. You read the Old Testament. There were a few people that the Lord specifically told them to go on a fast. Check the New Testament. How many people the Lord told them to fast? It's not there. And in the New Testament, fasting is not a direct command. Never, ever did he say. The folks came to him, to Jesus and said, Oh, well, you know, the disciples of John, they fast. And then, um, uh, what do you call it? They, they, they pray. But your disciples, they don't fast. Why? And Jesus says something. Whilst the bridegroom is with them, there's no way with his friends can they fast. When the bridegroom is taken away, then they will fast. Now, people also have taken this out of context. Well, the bridegroom is taken away, so the disciples have to fast. The bridegroom was taken away. His death, okay, that short period, he was raised. Now he's back. He's within us. He's within us. He's with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Do you get it? I have to get this out of the way. Now let's move on. So he said, uh, let's read together again. We are in uh, what? Galatians 1.14. Let's read together. Read. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Let's go on. Revelation, Revelation. Brethren, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace. Let's go ahead. To reveal, do you see it? To reveal his son. Because all this while, when uh, Paul was doing the persecuting thing, the son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, was not revealed to him. Do you get it? He had no, look, Jews, some Jews, up to today, those who don't believe, uh, they are not messianic, they don't believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, they don't refer to Jesus. If you call Jesus Christ around them, you are in trouble. They act like Saul was then acting. They have no clue to them. The son is yet, I mean, the son of God, Jesus Christ is yet to come. That prophet, that was uh, what prophesied about, is yet to come. So there's no revelation. There's no what? Can you say that? No revelation of who the son is. Come on, say it like you mean. There's no revelation of who the son is to them. So he said, by grace, God revealed to reveal his son in me. And then what happened? That I might preach him. So he started preaching. He stopped the Jehovah business. You read Acts chapter 9. You see that he started preaching Jesus Christ. He was in the synagogue everywhere preaching. And then now it was his time. They started to persecute him. Just like he was doing. I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. That's what we're talking about. Hallelujah. So he did all this. And let's see how he qualifies what he did. How he calls what he did. So let's go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1, 13. Are you enjoying the lesson? Amen. Are you? Amen. So is this really a, 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 what kind of, a, the STD kind of message? <laughs> STD. 
kind of message. Sensitive, touchy, and what? Delicate. Yeah, but we had to tackle it. Hallelujah. Although I was formerly what? A blasphemer, a persecutor. He addressed himself as a blasphemer, persecutor, and an insolent what? Man. But I obtained mercy because I did it what? Ignorantly, in unbelief. Now, Friday, I touch on this. If you haven't watched the Friday one, go watch it. If you haven't listened to it, please listen to it. Hallelujah. Amen. So now, this introduces us to what we are going to talk about. He did it ignorantly, in unbelief. Whereas Abraham, in Romans chapter 4, verse 20, the Bible says that he was no weak in faith. There was no unbelief. He did not waver at the promise of God. He was strong in his faith and he gave glory to God. When you become weak in your faith, it means that you are looking at other things. And I talk about that, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to go on to today. He did that in unbelief. What is unbelief? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hallelujah. Amen. So that opens us up to what? Um, where do I go from here? Mark 16, 14. Mark 16, 14. Uh, we can take it from 12 so we get a, some kind of contest. Thank you, Jesus. If if you if you want to fast, I'm not saying don't fast. I probably I'll tell you if you continue to fast, you get a revelation. If you fast well, that will bring you to revelation. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it says after that he appeared. Let, let, let's back. Let's back up. We're gonna read so much. Let's go, let's go way back. Ten. Let's go back. Let's continue to go back. I'm doing it for the sake of those who don't know the story. I can just tell you that, but I like to say, I like for people to read. All right, so we are going to do that. Now, when we are in verse 9, Mark chapter 16, Jesus then had been raised. He told them while he was there with them, this, I'm going to Jerusalem. When you read uh, uh, Matthew, you see 16, when he rebuked Peter, he says, going to Jerusalem, he's going to suffer from the authorities, he was going to lay down his life. Then he said, "What well, in, th in three days, or he said, he used even this parable, destroy this temple, and in three days I'll build it up. So now when he rose early, when he rose early on the what, first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Who are we talking about here, appearing to Mary Magdalene? Jesus. Jesus. Out of whom he had what, cast seven demons. So Jesus cast out what, demons. And we should be casting our what? demons. Amen. And today I'll tell you why. Some people, some pastors, spiritual leaders, they are even afraid of demons. It's because of unbelief. And that's why I'm sharing it with such passion. Amen. If I come up personally, I'm not attacking any spiritual leader. I'm not attacking any child of God. I'll be a big fool to attack you know, the precious people of God. So I'm not attacking. I'm coming against the ignorance that some people display in some corners, in some circles. I can't stand the frustration. I counsel people. I minister to people. I can't stand the frustrations, the struggle that people go through due to ignorance of God's word. And that is why when I minister, you see this much passion coming out of me. Especially when I see some of these spiritual leaders and they are teaching the nonsense. Okay, I'll be good. I'll behave myself. She went and told those uh, who had been with him as they were, mourned and wept. So somebody, Mary Magdalene, went and said this. All right, let's read on. Did some people believe? And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not what? Believe. They did not believe. Let's continue. After that, he appeared in another form, two of them, as they walked and went into the country. So, like I'm saying, Jesus appeared to Mary uh, Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. She said it to other people. They don't believe. In the same way, God has sent you, Sam. You are queer. I have seen him. He revealed himself to me. And I'm here telling you. Telling you, 
I used to walk in the traditions just like some people do now. So he revealed himself to me. You know why? God hasn't called you his messenger for calling sake. When he calls you as a messenger, it's because there's a message that he wants you to bring across. And I'm one of the people called, appointed, chosen at this time to bring restored truth to the body of Christ. Amen. To come against the traditions that have no basis in the word of God. And I'm going to handle it well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't look at me and say, oh, but we've done this all these years. In some churches, oh, the previous church I was, and then, you know, I know my, you know, even cousin at this church, oh, that church, they do this and that, they do that. Okay, let's look at what Bible says. Amen. That, that's the key thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why here, I'll go back and say that. I've never, ever put the church in bondage that fast for 40 days, or we're going to do 21 days fast. I don't do that, because I know better. When I come to the end of this message, I will say some more things about this fasting. It will shock you. But give me some time. Let me let me tread the way I've arranged the things. So after that, he appeared in another form to two men. They were they on their way to the uh, Emmaus, on the way of the Emmaus. Let's read on. 13. And they went and told it to the rest. But they did not believe them, neither or either. You see what is going on? You are waiting for an angel. God hasn't worked that way. What God wants you to know through me, he himself will never show up to let you know. No. It's just like parents and uh, their children. And the children is praying to God. Father, let me know this. When your parent can easily tell you whatever it is. You are bothering yourself. Hallelujah. Look at what Jesus did to them. What he said to them. Shall we all read this and read it powerfully for me? Let your neighbor, you know, do it like you are doing na 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 in your face kind of thing. Read it like that. Hallelujah. Let's read. Read. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table and he rebuked their unbelief. Wait, what did he do? Uh -huh. So you say, but this is not fair. Uh, Jesus, you revealed yourself to them. And they are saying it. Or you reveal yourself so they believe. Reveal yourself to me too. So I can also believe. This is not fair. You see, don't play God. He chooses to do whatever he wants to do. He chooses to reveal himself to some. So that through these people, they can also share with others. And God has worked that way. I mean, for what? Centuries. Centuries. He revealed himself through Abraham. That hasn't changed. It's still going on. He revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ. That hasn't changed. It's still going on. And through the disciples or the followers that he trained. So later, he appeared. Jesus appeared to the eleven. He's appointed disciples, apostles, as they sat at the table, and he rebuked the award, unbelief, and tell me, hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had what? Seen him after he had risen. That's how serious it is. What is unbelief? Unbelief is this word apistia. That's the Greek word. Faithlessness. When I say, can you say it back to me? Faithlessness. Faithlessness. Faith is pistis. But this is with the A, a negative. All right? A pistia. So, okay. Faithlessness. Come on. I said, when I say, say it back to me. Faithlessness. Faithlessness. What is unbelief? Faithlessness. Okay. What is faithlessness? Unbelief. What is unbelief? Don't you have another word? <laughs> all right, all right. I'm doing good. So faithlessness, disbelief. Come on. When I say when I say it, I'm throwing the definition to you. So when I say it, say it back to me, please. Okay, disbelief. 
Want of Christian faith. Disbelief. Want of Christian faith. Okay. Another one. Unfaithfulness. The last one. Disobedience. So you see, every base is covered. The, the unbelief is disobedience. It is unfaithfulness. It is disbelief. It is faithlessness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know how this comes about? Paul said it. He said, I did this ignorantly in what? Unbelief. Can we all say that? I did this ignorantly? I did this ignorantly. In unbelief. Amen. So ignorance somehow is tied to what? Unbelief. Ignorance is tied to what? Disbelief. Ignorance is tied to what? Disobedience. Ignorance is tied to what? Unfaithfulness. That is why I take the trouble. When people come to me and they want to marry, I take them what we call the premarital what? Counseling. And it's not to frustrate them, but I give them tools. I equip them. So we talk about things like uh, what? Communication. So you know how to communi communicate. Because the average person doesn't know how to communicate. They are even afraid to say what they really want to say. Do you get it? Part of communication is uh, a, a good listening. How many people listen good? Should I go there? Okay. You remember the last time? Just, just this past week. Someone was talking to you and it was still on your cell phone. Instead of stopping everything and listening to the person, then the person was talking and said, uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, I, I can't believe in your head. I can't believe you sent me this thing. What is this? Then the person said, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You are, you are not a good listener. That's not good listening. Good listening is shut everything down. You give your full attention to the person. Not even waiting to respond or react. But it's to be on the same page to understand what the person is saying. That's good listening. And then the other part is what? Convey the message. The main thing you want to talk about. It, doesn't, it shouldn't come out with frustration. It shouldn't come out of anger. It should come out. The Bible says we should speak the truth always what? In love. Do all things with love. So you speak in love. You have control over this. I got this. That's how you communicate. You don't communicate to a person like you want to tear them into pieces. Like the Bible says, there's one that speaks like the piercings of a sword. You know some people, when they speak it's like that, it's like you're being pierced with a sword. You don't speak that way. You speak gracefully, graciously. Read Luke chapter 4. He said, Jesus spoke gracious words. You speak with no corrupt what? word, no corruption in your voice, no corruption in your sentence, so it will minister what? Grace, impact grace to the hearer. That's part of communication. You don't speak looking down at people. You don't do that. You don't speak because you are not angry. You explode. You are still childish. You have a long way to go. I'm not attacking your personality. I'm, at, I'm attacking your behavior, your action. That's one thing too. People are so petty. When they are doing something stupid, they say what they are doing is stupid. Then they say, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. Is there not a difference between you are stupid and you are being stupid? You are not stupid, but you are acting like Stupid. Your action, your doing, that momentary thing that is being talked about is stupid, it's foolish. Jesus speaks like that too. Hallelujah. Are you getting something out of this? Hmm. I'm not even giving you the first one. <laughs> Uh, dear Lord. Look at what Jesus did. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe. Then that tells me that unbelief has something to do with their heart. Okay. Unbelief has something to do with their heart. Right? 
We got for Jesus to say the hardness of the heart. Let's have it in the New Living Translation. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's read together. One, read. So, so, oh, only three people are reading. The whole house, let us read together. Read. So later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. So, you see, probably I'll get that today, but in case I don't get it, I'm going to give it to you. When unbelief escalates, when it matures, it progresses, it gets to the climax, a certain level that is stubborn and rebellious. And why am I talking about this? Thank you, Nathan. Why am I talking, <laughs> why am I talking about this? Because at times, they are stubborn they, and rebellious ignorantly, like happened to Paul. Saul, who was then Saul? Can you go, hmm? Yeah. And that's why I'm addressing it. People at times, ignorantly, lack of knowledge, lack of truth, they are stubborn and rebellious. So I don't blame them. I can also say, why are you uh, ignorant of truth? Did you make any effort to learn? So, well, we want to leave it alone. All right? But at times, people are stubborn, obstinate, and rebellious, willfully and perversely. That means they know what is right. They know what is truth. What is expected of them. But they choose to do otherwise. Have you been there before? Come on. Come on. Let's hear you. Have you been there before? The rest of you are angels. That is unbelief in the highest, the apex, the climax. Unbelief in the highest, at the highest level. Don't get to that place. When you hear the word of God, I'll plead with you. You heard other people, you believe what they said. I'm giving you scriptures. Try me, check me out what I'm saying. Give me that chance. Try that. Do it. And see if it doesn't work. I know it works. I've been telling uh, my wife, I said, I now understand the wisdom and what God did with me. When he was giving me this revelation, look, I picked my sermon book. You know, I write outline and whatever. And I was looking through one. Philip was uh, in our bedroom uh, last night. He was looking at one. And he said, wow, 2010. And if you look at some of the things that I've shared on faith, it's mind-blowing. And I said, certain things didn't allow me to share because he wanted me. So I said, well, honey, you said, brood over it, walk in it, know it inside, in and out before sharing it. And that's why when I speak, I speak with such confidence because I'm talking about principles that are tried, proven, tested, they work. Hallelujah. I'm not just making noise or saying some theories. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sitting here, I've been in other nations, I've de uh, what? demonstrated it. I know what I'm talking about. It's that easy. If you follow the principle. Hallelujah. Amen. So there's stubbornness due to what? Ignorance. There's rebellion due to what? Ignorance. But it can come out of it. So some people... I'll touch again. You've ignorantly fasted. <laughs> when God is saying, no, you can get it this way. I'll, I'll give you this one. Ask. Ma Matthew 7. 7. Ask. And it shall be what? Given to you. Who said those words? Did he say, ask with fasting and it shall be given to you? So where did we get the fasting from? Definitely, it's not coming from Jesus. Are we on the same page? Do you agree with me? Oh, you see, you can't speak. Do you agree with me? Yes. So, where do people get it from? 
Judaism, Mosaic. It's not fresh. It's not fresh. It's not present truth. Then the same Jesus said, Seek in the same verse 7. Seek and you shall what? Find. Knock and it shall be open to you. He did not say fasting. Self-effort. It's unbelief in disguise. Wow. It's what? Unbelief in disguise. You think that is not good enough? You have to add something to it. You are going off. That is being stubborn. That is being rebellious. Because you are coming against what Jesus himself has said. The people come up with this thing. The Lord is leading me to fast. Don't, don't do that. Let me move on. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Sorry, Hebrews chapter 3. Unbelief is dangerous. Hebrews chapter 3, we'll read um, uh, verse. Okay, what I'm looking for is in verse 12 and it's also in verse, what do you call it, 19. Okay, let's read verse, verse 12. Hallelujah. Beware, brethren, lest there be in uh, any of you an evil or heart. Of what? Uh -huh. So, Jesus rebuked the unbelief, the hardness of what? Your heart. You see, if you, for with the heart, man believes unto what? Unto righteousness. That is uh, Romans 10, what? 10. And with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. So, unbelief lodges in the heart. Beware. Lest there be in any of you, be in you, and, and, and be let lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. What does he do? Departing from the living God. That's why I talk about these things. It's serious. These people are sincere. Alright? But they are sincerely wrong too. Look, you have no clue. I was born in the church. I was birthed in the church from the one. And then the one, it wasn't even a right teaching. I've been through wrong teaching. You know, until I came into the right church with right teaching. And even in that right church, some things were still wrong. You have no clue how I've questioned pastors. I've asked them the questions. Bible says this. Why are you saying that? How can we do this? Where, where is the basis? Why are we doing that? Like Jesus was in the temple. I didn't know what I was doing even at that tender age. But I had such a hunger for the things of God. So I would read and I would ask questions. And because I was also ignorant, I practiced some things that I had no business practicing. I told you one. I'll remind you. I came up with this as a teenager. I said, even though the Bible says, flee what? Fornication. I said, if I have a girlfriend and God knows in my heart that I'm going to marry this girlfriend, having sex with this girlfriend is no sin. Does it make it right? I walked in that. You see how serious it is? So here, I was walking in unbelief because I kicked aside the word of God. I was rebellious. I was stubborn till the revelation hit. And I said, that's it. It's over. Nobody laid hands on me to cast out any demon. I saw the word of, word of God. Revelation hit me and I said, that's it. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to have premarital sex. And I stayed clean till I got married. Years till I got married. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. You see, unbelief takes you away from the path of truth. The path of righteousness. The path where things become possible. The path where, where God makes himself manifest. The power of God works on your behalf. Unbelief negates that. He chokes that. That's why things are not happening for some people. That is why one, two, three, they're going to fast. Every year, they have to begin with a fast. When things are going wrong, then they start again. They fast. Don't even try that. 
Go listen to the full message before you begin to say what you are saying to me. I heard you. <laughs> Let's read on. Hallelujah to Jesus. So who are we referring to here? The people of Israel. Look, the, look at their unbelief. When they left Egypt, that's what we are talking about here. When they left Egypt, the things they saw under the uh, leadership of Moses. And each time there was a problem, each time there was a situation, they didn't want to go back into fasting. No, I'm adding that too. They didn't want to go back to Egypt. They will, they will question Moses. Why this, why that? You see, because the way they were going, they were not used to it. That was a fresh and new way. They had not been that way before. Everything, went well, how they were solving issues, meeting obstacles and overcoming that, everything was new. Let's read on. Unbelief was what was working. But I exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be what? Hardened through what? Deceitfulness of sin. I'm going to say something here too. I'm going to drop it. Misinformation, lack of knowledge. Misinformation can rob you big time. The way the devil robs people, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Misinformation. Not just ignorance. Ignorance is still misinformation. That is why we say it in this country. People, somebody can tell a lie. Another person can believe it. And what the Bible says in um, John chapter 8, uh, you are of your father the devil. Jesus said, John chapter 8, 44, you are of your father the devil. And then what? He doesn't abide in truth. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of himself from his own resources. That's who he is. His embodiment of lies, deceit. So he speaks that. The danger of this is this. When one speaks lies, perpetuates lies for a long time, the king of deceit and lies, the devil himself, becomes his body. The king of lies, that is the devil himself, manifests himself through the person. And that is why the person that dies, it looks like they don't have a heart. They don't have a feel for anything. They have no empathy. They have no sympathy. They have no compassion. I mean, they can look at you straight in your face, telling a lie, and you can say, oh my God. I mean, this is white. Why can't you say it's white? This is black. Why can't you say it's black? And it's, you don't get it. That is Satan in manifestation, working through somebody. And it continues to work. Then that means that person is deliverance. It works in leaders of nations. That is why people, leaders become tyrants. They become what? Uh, uh, what was the name? Detectors, authoritarians, and all that. That is why. Look at uh, some what? Leaders of um, society. That, that's what goes on. The devil knows how to work with leaders. He got that from God. God works with leaders because change doesn't take place from the bottom up. Change takes place. Transformation takes place from the top down. If the leader is changed, it's easy for it to flow down. You can't start any revolution. You can't start any change from the bottom up. It's always from the top. So the devil got that too. And he went with the leaders. And we've seen this in this country. The lies. Oh my goodness. Lies. Look, do you, you know the name of the devil? Slanderer. Huh? Slanderer. So he, he, he concords. <laughs> he fabricates stuff. He can say it like it's real. It's not real. It's not true. But he can say it like it is so. And people believe it. Because when he speaks, there's a spirit behind it. Look, I'm going to say something that is uh, it's sensitive, but I'm going to say it. It happened in the Old Testament. 400 prophets, they had a lying, a lying spirit influenced them. And they told a lie. They prophesied a lie to the king. Only Micaiah or Micaiah, he's the only one that spoke the truth. One prophet. He was thrown into prison. He said, You throw me there. If you come back from the battle, mm -hmm. and then I'm still here, then that's it. He said, I'm going to come back and kill you. Mm -hmm. But he said, No, you're going to be killed. Mm -hmm. And really, he was killed. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. So, in the same way, if some portion of the body of Christ, some believers, the body of Christ, they are acting phony and funny, it's because they are bewitched. I'm saying that, you can quote me on that. They are bewitched. You look at Bible truth, what truth says, you look at the symptoms, you can tell how they are bewitched. That is why they call evil good and good uh, what? Evil. 
That's why they can't stand up for what is wrong. They can't say it. They can't say anything against it. They lose even common sense. That's one of the base low signal signs that one is bewitched. You follow loosely. And look at this point. To the point of worshipping a person. When we fail to rally around the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we fail to go for his principles. And then now we pick up a man. And we begin to worship the man. And we begin to worship his principles. We are off. That's what it is. Off. Deceived. Hallelujah. Like I've been saying. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. If the person, what they are doing, doesn't represent God, doesn't represent Bible values, whatever, don't go for it. Hallelujah Amen. to Jesus. Why are we? Okay, let's read on. 14. We are still in um, Hebrews 3. For we have become partakers of what? Christ. If we hold the, uh, what? the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. You don't shift. Alright? Let's read on. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. What did he say today? If you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion. What the Israelites did? You see, it's called rebellion. Do not harden your heart. They fought Moses. And in uh, what? Numbers of the 14, God said, in these 10 times, these ten times they have seen all the miracles, yet yeah, these people would even budge. They are still rebellious. They are stubborn. Let's read on. For who have you heard? You see, they heard the truth. Moses would tell them, this is what we are going to do. This is the way we are going. They rebelled. Unbelief. I'm showing you how unbelief works. Instead, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Were they not all led by Moses? How come only Joshua and Caleb they followed the Lord? How come? What happened to the rest? Let's read on. Now with whom was he hung, uh, angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? It calls that sin. Unbelief is sin. Can you say that unbelief is sin? Whose corpses fell in the wilderness? Let's read on. And to whom did he swear that they will not enter his rest? <laughs> but to those who did not obey. So you see all the definition of unbelief we give. Disobedience is right there. You see? Yeah. Disobedience, disbelief, rebellion, stubbornness. We've seen all that. Let's go to the next verse. That's what he did. So we see. Let's all read this together. Read. So we see that they could not what, enter in because of what? Unbelief. So number one, you can't enter into the promise of God. You can't experience the promise of God. You can enjoy the promise of God. Hallelujah. You can experience the power of God. You can exercise the authority of God if you walk what? In unbelief. That's one. I'm going to jump because I have to finish. My time is up. So I'm going to give you this. Matthew 17. I reserve for the last, but I'm going to give it to you now because I touch on those things. Matthew 17, 20 and 21. Unbelief is what? Faithlessness. Is disbelief. Is want of Christian faith. It's unfaithfulness. It's disobedience. Stubborn and what? Rebellious. Alright? So let's read here. So Jesus said to them, we are in Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, assuredly, for assuredly, I said to you, if you have faith as a master seed, you will say to this mountain, move from there to there, and it will move, and nothing will be what? Impossible for you. Now let's have 21. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So what was Jesus doing? He cast out a demon. Do we all know that he cast out a demon? Let's go to 17 to be sure if he cast out a demon. A learner demon. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? 
How long shall I bear with you? You see, bear with your ignorance. All right? Bring him here to me. Let's read on. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. What did Jesus do? Tell me, church. What did Jesus do? He rebuked the demon. We also have authority to rebuke demons. And when we rebuke demons, they have to come out, just like happened to Jesus. And the child was cured from that very hour. So that's why I say certain things, medication will work, if medication doesn't work, and it continues and continues, it could be demonic, spiritual. All right? Let's read on. So, uh, 19. The disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out, the demon out? 20. We read it, but we're going to read again. Let's read again. Slowly read. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a master seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from there, here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Now, I'll come to the 21, but let's talk about this. Some people teach, and they say this, I've heard this before. Some mountains are too tough. You need to add fasting. You see, Jesus here, if we are to fast, so we can move mountains. Jesus is not stupid. Jesus is not ignorant. He would have said it. Jesus is omniscient. 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 He knows it all. He could have said that. Do you agree with me? Yes. So he didn't say fasting. So who am I to add fasting to it? Unbelief in disguise. That's how stubborn. And you see how long he's been in the church. This stubbornness, this level of unbelief. We think some mountains you have to fast. You feel me, right? Some mountains, you have to fast before you move them. Whoever shared their experience with you, I was going through this and I, I had to fast. That, I don't have time. Jesus says, listen, I'll read it to you again. I say to you, if you have faith, if you have faith, they say, if you fast, if you have faith, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Then I love this. Nothing. No thing. Nothing. No thing. Faith covers it all. Nothing is impossible. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, people jump this. And then they go to 21. Let's go to 21 there. And I'm going to give you another thing. I told you this is STD. However, this kind does not go out and said by fa uh, prayer and fasting. And I've told you over and over. People quote this and they don't even know what Jesus said dealt with. Now, simple English. If you understand English, he says this particular, specific, this kind. Then what kind? Lunatic or epileptic. That's the demon he cast out. So we can only apply, if we want to apply this verse, we can only apply it to when we are dealing with the lunatic. Then we are going to say, well, he said, this is not supposed to be there in the first place, this verse. But okay, let's, let's, let's leave it like that. But he said, this kind, by prayer. And then why are you dealing with other things that have no uh, reference or relationship with this? Epilepsy or lunacy. That kind goes up by prayer and fasting. So why are you fasting and praying about other things? Does it make sense? That's unbelief. And I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know whether the devil didn't want me. Today I had a dream that is interesting. Dream. And I realized it's because of this message. I rebuke every form of unbelief. Every seed of unbelief. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I come against every stubbornness. I come against every rebellion in the name of Jesus. I command it out of your lives in Jesus' name. I declare you free. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me add what I'm going to add to this. Listen to this. First, he said faith. With faith, everything or nothing is what? Impossible. Then, our God-given authority, see our God-given authority, is over Satan, is over evil spirits, is over demons, and any what? Devil. 
This God-given authority covers it all. Fasting or no fasting. He didn't say you will cast out devil. I've given you authority. And you are going to cast out devils. Hey, hey, but wait a minute. When it comes to the devil of epilepsy, when it comes to the devil of what? And lunacy, then that one you have to fast and pray. Then that negates the authority is given to us. But the authority he gave to us, there's no qualification regarding what? Fasting to a specific word, casting out of a demon. Do you agree with me? Am I making sense? Yeah. I've taught in Bible school before, so I know how to make a case. Mm -hmm. I have the lawyering kind of thing in me. <laughs> so I'm presenting the case. So what he said, I've given you authority. When you read all over, he gave his uh, uh, disciples, his followers, authority over all the powers of the enemy, including any demon. So there's no demon that he can cast out. And he had to fast before. And that is how people have worked in unbelief because of misinformation. They read just this. When you put the verse 20, when he talks about faith and what I've just said, our God given authority, you put it together and look at uh, other scriptures, you realize that that is true. This is out. There's nowhere in Bible that is said, cast the demon out by fasting. Do you get it? So, why are people, you know, how many demons have they been cast out? You see, so far as you think that I had to be in prayer, I had to be in fasting before I can do, and you have not had time to be in fasting, and if you've even fasted, you've never even attempted to cast out any demon, then that means you're not going to walk in what God has given you. What is stopping you? Unbelief. What is blocking you? Unbelief. And unbelief is blocking the, your own manifestation, or God's manifestation, for what? His promises, His purposes for your life. That's how dangerous unbelief is. That's how dangerous. I don't. I, it, at times, I ask myself, how do people read? How, look, this is simple English. Just like Matthew seven seven. This this is why it's the same. How be this kind? If this kind, we are going to even go for that. Then let's limit to that particular kind, that specific word, kind. But why do we spread it all over? Unbelief. Can you say that unbelief? unbelief. And unbelief have, has blocked. I refuse that. I won't say that. Unbelief was trying to block your own breakthrough. I didn't finish. I'll come back. I'll continue. I'll give you two examples. Next time when I show up, I'll give you another example. Jesus himself couldn't do much because of people's unbelief. When you study Mark chapter 6, 5 and 6 is right there. That's how serious it is. Is my time gone? Yeah. My time is gone. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I'm going to end on that. I was going to read it for you to see. When you go, I'm begging you. Go read it and see it for yourself. Jesus himself, the Messiah, the Savior, he couldn't do much because unbelief was in the picture. So in the same way, if you walk in unbelief, the devil likes it. That's why he, he gets involved. You know, he will stay there so he will rob you. Kick against it. Don't court unbelief. Hallelujah. I'll end uh, with these words in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and 13. Stand firm in the liberty where with Jesus, the anointed one, has made you free. And do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.